I've had um, a number of men mention to me recently, both um, in person and then also like in chats on social media, that they're feeling concerned about changes in the law regarding rapes. So there's changes in the law that are also um, reflecting changes of social paradigm and social expectations around sex. So if we go back a hundred years and we can say for the last, you know, 800 years before that, you know, uh, most sex was going on inside marriages and it was considered that the man and the woman would get married and the woman was told at the marriage, you know, you're not going to enjoy sex and it's pretty crap, but basically you need to do this. It's your wifely duty to your husband. So just lie back and think of England. So we can say in modern wor words that the women were basically being told disassociate while the male does this to you and get on with it you know get on with life because this is the life of being um being a wife you know and not to mention that there was a lot of servants and slaves in those days that would quite often be subjected to rape as well and didn't really have any recourse um to the law now in the last 60 to to 50 years we've been having a sexual revolution so people's sexual behaviors change uh people have been having sex you know with multiple partners outside of marriage but there's also been a kind of like a sexual awakening so rather than the sex that was happening before um which was you know the the um i, I call it almost like a masturbation that the, the, the husband would often perhaps be just masturbating inside the wife rather than them having a deep connection you know a deep sort of tantric style connection or something um uh, so so yeah people people wanted to change because they wanted to have better sex they wanted to really have a lot of orgasms you know there's becoming more more information about like you know the the female pleasure anatomy female orgasms female ejaculation the clitoris the g-spot and everything you know so women are demanding more pleasure and certainly for women and i think for men as well having more pleasure is actually like it you know it's tied completely in to consent because you know if i was having sex with someone and i wasn't enjoying it i was disassociating maybe my body was tense and so i was feeling pain i wouldn't really have a great time whereas if i'm having sex which i'm like really into i'm really feeling then i'm going to have like a great time and i'm going to be really thankful to my lover afterwards so um uh as we see now i think one of the problems with the sexual revolution is that a big sort of like underlying factor to the sexual revolution has actually been the porn industry not speaking about depiction of nude people or or people having sex but actually the industry which has got very um patriarchal undertones to it and generally you know is centered on the male pleasure of the male orgasm the the male getting his pleasure with the woman um often actually violence against woman, women and you know strangulation rape and so on is actually being sort of um glorified on Pornhub. so whilst in many ways as society we're evolving sexually the porn industry is still keeping us in a very backward sort of pa patriarchal mentality in um uh in the very the, the same kind of mentality that was going on under the church when the church was sort of in control of people's sex lives um so um i can understand definitely you know and uh why why people are having problems because also there's a real lack of like meaningful sex education education going on around consent and so on that's happening um in in schools you know there's not much decent sex education available at all and often parents will even tell their kids you know go and look in porn or or even you know kids are watching porn and they're maybe 11 years old 14 years old and then that's helping to kind of develop their opinions about what is normal sex so um i think that the, the old paradigm that normal sex is basically you know this, this idea i grew up with that the guy is horny and his he has his right to have sex with you and come you know that's still there and um you know for example what if the woman or the male because obviously we mustn't forget that sexual assault can be committed by women against women women against men men against men it's not exclusively male against female although this is what is perhaps the most common and gets the most attention for sure um but as long as we kind of have this i would say entitlement entitlement to other people's bodies and entitlement to basically get off on other people which comes down to the fact we don't have a good relationship with our own sexual energy things are going to be problematic so to look at these laws specifically one of the one that ones that was mentioned to me was basically um 
there's a law that if the person is too drunk to consent, it's rape. Yeah. So whether that's your partner, whether it's um, someone you've just met in a bar and you go home with them, they're so drunk that they can't consent and you have sex with them, that's rape. I mean, it kind of seems like common sense to me. On the one hand, it's understandable that, uh, you know, uh, maybe both people are so, so drunk, you know, hopefully nobody's going to complain afterwards, but there is the potential for that to happen. And especially that's getting amplified if, for example, like condoms weren't used or, you know, maybe the person asked for condoms and you didn't use them, which that definitely is rape. If someone says use a condom and you go ahead without one, that is rape and you can go to jail for that. So be careful around that, you know, don't feel entitled because the person said they're okay to have sex that it means it's okay to have sex without a condom and um um so while yeah so um while we have this attitude this attitude of entitlement which is basically coupled with this bad relationship with our own sexual energy we are walking on thin ice and as things are changing as things are adapting um, we're definitely putting ourselves like into a um, vulnerable position. So, um, I mean, obviously these laws, we can feel intimidated by them. We can be scared by them, but I think also we can use them as an opportunity to actually like improve our relationship with our own sexuality in a bid to actually get more pleasure, not for less pleasure. So for example, you know, if, if, you know, I think specifically men do need to be aware because for example, as a male, you have a lot generally a more physically stronger, larger body than a female. And this can be intimidating to a female, whether you understand this or not. Obviously then there's the fact the male tends to penetrate and go inside the female. Yeah. And being penetrated is not the same as penetrating. If you can't understand what I mean, just have a think about that and try to understand the difference. Like, for example, you know, if a woman, say, had a dildo the size of the, your penis, if you're a man and you have a penis and a woman had a dildo the size of your penis and she wanted to put that into your bum, imagine if she wanted to shove that in, in the way that you may shove something in her vagina, you may well be horrified about that. I mean, I think a minority of guys will, will enjoy it, but the majority of guys will be horrified about the idea of their body being penetrated in this way. So I think this is something that's really, important to be aware about um, that, uh, you know, the experience of a woman having sex with a man is different from the experience of a man having sex with a woman. Um, however, obviously then we have to say the woman has more concern perhaps about STDs because it's actually going inside her body and then there's the fear of pregnancy and everything as well. So it's quite different for a woman to have sex than a guy. But then we can take this all, all this stuff and we can actually use it in our favor. So in martial arts, we say we take our weaknesses and we turn them into our strengths. And for example, the law is now saying, slow down. And I don't think that that's a bad thing, you know? I mean, personally, I, I really like going slow. I like being with someone, kissing, hugging, making out, not having sex. I think that's actually like super sexy because when you have a good relationship with your own energy your own sexual energy you can do that and you can actually like meditate with your energy and build up like an incredible amount of energy um and really uh um like uh yeah like really like get an amazing experience out of it and i mean i i'll mention i had a ex-boyfriend who all my friends disapproved of you know but i was really in love with him madly in love with him and the reason was when we first got together and started kissing, I said to him, I don't want to have sex. And he goes, that's fine, it's fine, you don't have to. And he was lovely, he kissed me, he cuddled me. When I was ready to have sex, I slowly said, okay, I think I'm ready to just rub your penis on my pussy. And he was like, okay. And I said, don't want you to push it inside. He didn't. He let everything go at the pace that I wanted it to go. And I mean, I would say I had some of my best orgasms, best sexual experiences, you know, despite the fact that perhaps he was, a little bit of an unsuitable partner for me um just because you know he did go slow and he did let me in the sense allow my body to open up you know and um the Taoist masters of old and mantak chia he also talks about how um it takes much much longer for a female to open up to pleasure than a male a male can be ready for sex theoretically at least quite quickly although whether he actually is really ready for sex is another question 
but it often takes around an hour and a half of foreplay for the woman to be relaxed enough to really receive the penis, to really be juicy, to really be able to have like those amazing, amazing orgasms. Um, so, um, so, so yeah, like, you know, I, I do think that these laws actually, they they can benefit us, you know? And I mean, obviously like, you know, to, to eliminate a hundred percent the, the, the danger of being accused of, um, of sexual assault. I mean, I suppose you could say there is maybe some crazy people or something that will make allegations, you know, and I do think it is possible. There are some people that are so deeply traumatized that they're going to read any future event as a re-traumatization of what happened in the past. So for example, they were raped, they were sexually abused, then they may reinterpret your events and actually believe this is what's happening. And I, I think it's the same with these people that it's just so important to go slow, you know, not to just meet people and straight away think about having sex, you know? I mean, somebody might be a great person, but also really traumatized and perhaps for them to just, you know, to talk with them, to hold them, like you're doing a beautiful, beautiful thing and also helping in their healing. And again, like ladies beware, it's not just men that can be accused of things, women can as well. And we as women, we need to also be careful, you know, because um, I've talked to a few male friends who've mentioned to me that they've been in positions where they've been, you know, felt really pressured and almost forced to have sex by women. Or for example, they've been fingered up the bum by women that when they didn't want it. And that's not cool either, you know, because we can't be expecting better behavior of men if we're not going to be able to do, um, if we're not going to be willing to basically behave better ourselves, you know? So I actually had an experience when I was um, very young, maybe 17, 18, I had a sexual experience at a party with a boy that I liked and it was, I'd liked him for ages and it was just a one-time thing. And afterwards I just had this weird feeling like, I don't think he really liked that. Yeah. I actually think like there was something really weird about it. You know, I mean, I can't say it wasn't like I forced anything on him or whatever, but it just, I went away with this horrible feeling. And after that, I just thought, you know what, like, if I'm get, getting with someone, if I'm being with someone, I want to take everything really, really slow. And actually by going at this like really slow pace, it didn't mean I've had less fun. It actually means I've had more fun. You know, I've been able to enjoy myself more because like, everything lasted longer. It took so much more time, you know, and my orgasms got better. The fun I could have with my partner would get better. So um, there's actually real power in having self mastery over your sexual energy in doing the meditation, doing meditation, doing meditating with your sexual energy, getting your breathing, slowing down and just learning to relax into pleasure. And I've got a YouTube video, um, a meditation where you can learn how to do that. Um, so, um, I hope that you found this useful. Please feel free to ask any questions in the comments section and, um, um, and yeah, just remember like consent is the key to pleasure.